Hey everyone and welcome to another Simple Science video. This video is in our IGCSE revision series following up from our previous video on separation methods. I'm going to talk about another separation method that is paper chromatography. So the whole concept of paper chromatography to quickly summarize is to place a dot or drop of a mixture of substances onto a chromatogram or a platform whereby chromatography can take place such as filter paper and then we place it in a solvent whereby the substances can dissolve and as they dissolve and the solvent front moves on the paper the substances will move on the paper and how they move on the paper will be due to a number of factors so that's the basic summary of you know paper chromatography and of course we have to find the uh, we have to calculate certain values so why do we use paper chromatography Paper chromatography is done in order to find out three things. First thing is to find out how many substances are there in the mixture. So if we are able to locate these, the, um, the separated substances as three separate colors on our uh, chromatogram in this example, then we can say that there are three substances that make up this mixture. The number two reason is to find out the purity of the substance. So if you want to find out if this sus a substance is pure or it's made up of only one substance then you would uh, do paper chromatography run it under a solvent and if there's only one colored substance that shows on our chromatogram then this substance is pure because it's only made up of one substance and it's not being adulterated by many substances number three is to identify the substances so we don't just want to see that these substances do exist we want to find out what they are and um, this is based on how far they move relative to how far the solvent moves, which is, can be indicated or suggested by a value known as the RF or retardation factor value. Ha ha ha. So what's the science behind paper chromatography? So paper chromatography is based on a couple of factors. Actually, two factors, sorry. The first factor is solubility. So how well it dissolves in a solvent. So if we look on the left, we have a mixture of three substances and these three substances will s dissolve differently or by different strengths inside a certain solvent that we're going to use. So as a result, we find out that the more soluble the substance in the solvent, the faster the substance will move. So for example, the, the light green substance is more soluble inside our solvent than the dark green substance so therefore it will move faster or further within a given amount of time so we'll move further on the chromatogram at all times the other factor that will affect how well substances separate is the attraction to the paper so the usually the more attractive the substance to the paper the slower it will move it will sort of make sense so if you're trying to if you see if you're trying to push a block across a table on a surface of oil compared to a surface of glue, which will allow the block to be s attracted better to the table, you find out that you were able to push the block across the, s the surface of oil much easier. You know, that, that, that's, a, that's a proper example, I guess. <laughs> so let's look at how, uh, how the method of chromatography works. So the first thing we need to do is to draw a baseline on the chromatogram. So this is a baseline. So the baseline is basically a reference point whereby we can measure certain distances as I will talk about later. Next point is to place a small drop of our mixture that we want to separate onto the baseline okay and we place the chromatogram into a beaker of a solvent usually we would close the lid to prevent the solvent from escaping okay and then we will allow the solvent to rise. So as we allow the solvent to rise, we find out that sub different substances will also rise. And they will rise due to solubility and different attraction to the paper. Okay, and the next thing we need to do is to remove our chromatogram with the solvent front and the separated substances, and we want to dry it in the oven. So we will now obtain our, you know, our result, that is the chromatogram. So the next thing we need to do is to identify the substance, right? So from the baseline, we want to measure the distance moved by the substance, distance A, and the distance moved by the solvent front. 
or about the solvent, the highest point in the solvent, that is, B. And then we find the retention factor, uh, sorry, the retardation factor, RF. And we do this by dividing A by B. So this will give us the RF value, which is standard, or most substances will have, I mean, all substances that are of the same, okay, the same substance will have the same RF value, okay? And we wanna look it up in the standard tables. And from calculation, we can compare it to the values um, of theory, and if they are similar or exactly the same, then <laughs> they uh, you, you can find out the substance itself. So what happens if the substance is colorless? So we just conduct it the same as before. So the, su the colorless substance I indicated in this diagram as this dotted oval, you know, there's meant to be a mixture in there, but we j I just indicated the, out the brief outline. So we're gonna place a drop of the mixture onto the chromatogram, like before, and we wanna carry out chromatography like before. So we wanna place it in a solvent, allow the solvent to rise, and the substances will separate where we just can't see them, okay? We cannot see them. So then we want to spray our chromatogram with a locating agent, a common locating agent for colorless substances like amino acids, as we do chromatography, is ninhydrin. And as we do so, the um, these little spots or these colored substances will appear, whereby we can now conduct our calculations it's because we can actually see it. Okay, so that's basically paper chromatography done. Yay! Quickly summarize because it's a long video. Chromatography is a form of separation based on solubility and attraction to the paper. We need to find the RF value in order to identify the substances. And finally, for the colorless substances, use a locating agent. All right. So thank you very much for watching my videos. I hope you come back and watch the previous videos on IGCSE Chemistry. And I wish you all good luck in revision and your examinations. See you again.